everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to get higher and more stable FPS out of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Valhalla released just over two months ago now and it's still not properly optimized for PC, despite the patches and GPU updates that have come out. Frankly, it can run pretty crappy on even the beefiest of rigs, but there's a few things you can do both in Windows and in the game itself that can help improve your gaming experience. But first things first, before we move on from here, ensure the game is fully patched and that your GPU drivers are up to date. Let's start with a look at tweaks to Windows 10 itself. First up is hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Now Microsoft states this feature allows your GPU to manage its own video memory instead of letting the operating system take care of things. This is supposed to reduce latency and improve overall game performance. But in reality, I found no compelling evidence that this actually works. In fact, there's a lot of benchmarks out there that show this can actually hinder performance overall. I myself saw a substantial leap in both FPS and overall game stability when I disabled this setting. So I highly recommend you kill this process and see if it works for you. This is also really easy to toggle off and on. So here's how you're going to want to do it. You're going to want to start by clicking the Windows button in the bottom left corner and then clicking on this settings cog here which opens up this window. Click on system and ensure you're in the display tab. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the display tab and look for graphic settings. Click on graphic settings and at the top you'll see hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Ensure you toggle this off. And keep in mind that once you toggle it off, you're gonna have to do a complete system restart to see this actually come into effect. Okay, let's get your system juiced up now by enabling the ultimate performance power option. This mode basically lets your hardware suck all the power it wants without question. So, disclaimer, do not run this mode if you're on battery power because you're gonna hemorrhage power like nuts and flatten your battery in no time. But if you're plugged in or in a desktop, this is the mode for you and it's super easy to turn on. Click the Windows key in the bottom left hand corner. Type in power, select power and sleep settings. On the right hand side, select additional power settings and in this window, power options, select ultimate performance. Once that's selected, close this window and this window and you are good to go. If in that last window we had up, you didn't have ultimate performance, don't panic. It's sometimes hidden by default and I can show you how to turn that on right now. It's really easy to do. So click on the windows button in the bottom left hand corner, type in windows power shell and open that bad boy up. You should get a window that looks like this. Now, in the description of the video down below, there's a command string. I want you to cut that and paste it into this window that you have open, so it looks like this. Hit enter, and you will get confirmation that ultimate performance is enabled. You can close this window. Now, we just have to retrace our steps. Click the Windows key, type power and sleep settings, Go back to additional power settings, and now you should have ultimate performance. As you can see, I have a duplicate now because I just activated a second one. Select your ultimate performance, close these windows, and you are good to go in your new power mode. I found that turning this power mode on actually made a massive difference in how Valhalla performed compared to just the high performance option. So hopefully it works as well for you as it did for me. Thirdly, let's disable full screen optimization for the game. Full screen optimization is supposed to detect a program being in full screen mode and then optimize performance for it. So I know what you're thinking, this probably sounds pretty counterintuitive, but it often hinders the performance of games and for me, turning it off completely eliminated all of the micro stutters I was getting in Valhalla. So to disable this, the first thing you wanna do is open up Ubisoft Connect. Once you have that open, ensure you're on the games tab and under installed games, right click on Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Select View Game Details, and on the left-hand side, select Properties. Then, select Open Folder. When this window pops up, look for AC Valhalla, right-click on it, and select Properties. Then go to the Compatibility tab. About partway down, you'll see Disable Full Screen Optimizations. Tick that, hit Apply, and click OK. Once you've done that, ensure you restart your system. And lastly, Windows game settings. So Windows has a built-in game mode, which is designed to, I guess, boost performance in video games by detecting that the game is active and running and then shuffling system resources to that game. Frankly, it's a hit and miss if that actually works. It's a game by game basis, it seems. For me, Valhalla seems to work pretty good with game mode being on. I got slightly higher FPS and general stability across the board. 
Whereas others I've talked to, they say that they actually see a decrease in performance with it on, so they've switched it off for a better gaming experience. Regardless, I thought I'd just include it in the video, that way you know where it is, and then that way you can toggle it back and forth and see what works best for you. So to get to game mode, you're gonna to wanna to go to the Windows button in the bottom left corner, and then just type in game, which will give you game mode settings. Click on that bad boy there, and it'll open up the game mode window. This is the toggle here, just toggle it, back and forth between off and on, run the game and see if you get any FPS boost one way or the other. However, while we're in here though, we should talk about uh, game capture in the Xbox game bar. Windows has a built-in game capture software, which frankly, it's a bit of a resource pig and it will bog your system down. So to turn that off, go to captures here on the left-hand side and ensure you have background recording and recorded audio switch to off. Once you've done that, go up to Xbox Game Bar and turn that off as well. While game mode itself may have marginal impact, if any, on Valhalla, ensuring that game capture and the game bar are off will undoubtedly improve performance across the board, especially on low to mid-range systems. Now that we've made some changes to Windows, let's hop into Valhalla itself and tinker with the graphics. All right, we're gonna start off on the screen tab here, and the first thing up is the field of view. Now for me, I'm running this at 100%, but lowering it means your system has to render less peripheral imagery, which can actually translate to an FPS increase. But be warned, if you dial this back too much, it actually narrows the field of view significantly, and if you're sitting close to a larger monitor, you can actually get motion sick and pop all over your keyboard, so be careful with this one. Below that is your FPS limit. Now. I have mine set to off because I found actually that throttling the FPS led to significant FPS drops, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But if you're seeing FPS drops, try setting it to off and you may see a slight boost in your overall performance. Down below this, we run into the display settings itself. Now, active monitor is just that, it's the active monitor the game is running on. Window mode, you're gonna wanna select full screen because I found significant FPS drops in both borderless and windowed mode, so make sure you have full screen selected. Aspect ratio, I didn't feel there was any need to change this from its native ratio, so I'm just gonna leave that alone. Resolution though, this is where you kinda have to play to your system's strengths. Now, I'm running it at 4K resolution because I have the hardware that's able to do it. If you don't, you can dial it down to 2K or 1080p, and then with some good graphics tweaks on the next tab over, you can actually bring up the overall fidelity of the game while staying within the resolution that runs best on your system. Refresh rate, I recommend just leaving this at the native resolution for the monitor. I have a 4K 60 Hertz monitor and that's what I'm leaving it at. VSync. Now I don't use VSync because I found the game runs smoother with it off and generally produces a better constant FPS. However, you may have to enable this if you get excessive screen tearing on your game, and that is of course a case-by-case -case basis, system to system. And lastly, resolution scale. I'd recommend keeping this at 100%, but you can dial this down to have the game render their graphics at a lower resolution, but it allows you to keep the resolution that we set up above up here. However, be careful, if you decrease this too drastically, it can actually lead to a quite a blurry image and the graphics look pretty crappy and the whole game looks pretty washed out. So be careful with how you use this, but if you use it right, you can actually squeeze a few more FPS out of your system. Under the graphics tab, the first thing that pops up is graphics quality. And all this is, is a list of presets to just set graphics and forget about it. However, anything you change down below automatically switches this to custom. So for this guide's purpose, we're gonna pretend this one doesn't exist because it's frankly irrelevant. However, adaptive quality, what this does is this kind of throttles your graphics to try and hit a target frames per second. And as you can see, you can have it set to off 30, 45 or 60 frames a second. Now where this becomes a problem is that if you have a lower end system, it actually can squish your graphics so much that they kind of look like they were rendered on a potato and it's not really worth it. However, I'm running this at an adaptive quality of 60 frames a second because I have an RTX 3080 and I have seen really no changes in overall graphics fidelity. However, my FPS shot up through the roof as soon as I started using this thing. So depending on what frames you wanna play it, you got some options here you can kind of pick, but I recommend if you can, shoot for 60 FPS adaptive quality if you have the hardware for it. With anti-aliasing, this is automatically gonna be set to adaptive if you're using adaptive quality, but if you switch it to off, you get three options, low, medium, and high. Now for me, I found that low looked like absolute crap when I tried running it. It made everything look like it's had this 
I guess this furry haze around it, I didn't like it. However, I didn't see much of a difference between medium and high. Even if you look on the right side, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in the preview window. So what I would recommend is if you're struggling for FPS and you wanna get a few more out of it, try just going with the medium setting because I find that I took a huge FPS hit just by going to high anti-aliasing. Under world, there's two options, world details and clutter. With world detail, there's very little difference between medium and ultra settings. Myself, I'm using very high, but I'd actually be comfortable dialing this down to high. Ultra seems like a royal waste of VRAM and low makes aspects of the world look rather bland. I'd shoot for either medium or high here to get a good compromise between FPS and graphical fidelity. For clutter, I'm running this on high because I couldn't see any appreciable difference between high and very high in my system. Like I really tried and out in the world, I couldn't find any difference that I actually could notice on a regular basis. Either medium or high settings here leads to a better looking game without the actual massive hit on FPS. Low should be avoided though, because like with world detail, it makes the game look sterile and washed out in a lot of areas. Below this is environment, and this is the area where you're going to see the best increase to your FPS if you tweak it just right. And first off is shadows, and like in any game, shadows are going to be a massive resource hog. And I spent a lot of time, probably far too much time, analyzing the shadows in this game across the entire spectrum from low to ultra high. Low looks like garbage, I'd recommend you avoid low at all costs. However, ultra high, the VRAM hit doesn't really... I guess it's not worth it for what you're going to get for shadow quality. I saw a really negligible difference from medium to ultra high, so I'm running mine on high. But if you really need to get an FPS boost here, you can always drop this down to medium, and I found that medium still looks really good as you're running around the world. Below that, you get volumetric clouds. Now these things are like shadows. They can be a bit of a resource hog, and they add more ambience to the game, but they're really not, I guess they're not important. I'd recommend you don't use medium because they look kind of sterile. However, ultra high and very high take a lot of VRAM and you really don't get that much bang for your buck out of it. So I'm running mine on high, but keep in mind that if you do need to squeeze a few more FPS out, dial it back to medium because really how long and how often are you going to be staring at the clouds in the game anyway? Below that, water. Water, this one's kind of a weird one. Low, I noticed that there was less lapping and less shore effects and less wave crests on low, but for medium to high, I really tried to find any difference. I couldn't find anything and I stared at the water probably as long as I stared at shadows and I did not see any real difference, but there's a huge hit to VRAM if you pop it up to high. So I'm running mine on medium and I'm very happy. I'd recommend go for medium. Try high if you want, but it seems like a waste of VRAM to me. And then screen space reflections. This one, yeah, this one is uh, its a huge drain on system resources, I'll be honest here. And all it does is it creates reflections in the water for objects that are along the shore and whatnot. It makes the game look really, really good. But I would recommend, unless you have the hardware to do it, just turn it off. You're going to see a massive FPS boost. But if you do have decent high-end hardware, leave this on. It actually makes the game look really, really good and adds to the immersion of the world. Under textures here, both environment textures and character textures present drastic changes in image quality as you dial these down. The environment and the characters become bland and washed out looking on low, so I'd recommend high. Medium is a clear downgrade from high, but if you need the FPS, you can dial these down to the medium area and the game will look decent, but I would highly recommend you shoot for high and avoid low at all costs under both of these options. And lastly is post-processing. Both depth of field and motion blur I have set to off. This is a personal choice as I don't enjoy either of these in any game I play, but you can leave them on. However, they do suck a little bit of system resources. It's not a lot, but if you're looking to squeeze what you can out of your hardware, these are good things to turn off as they don't alter how the game looks really at all. So that's it for this Assassin's Creed Valhalla optimization guide. I hope you all really enjoyed it, and I really hope you learned something to help improve the game and your overall gaming experience while playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If you know of any other ways to tweak Windows for this game, or know of any ways to tweak the graphics settings in general, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I will chat with you all again really soon.